Maybe some of you are act too curious. Hello, aspiring actuaries. My name is Michelle. This is Actuariel, my actuarial YouTube channel. Maybe you subscribe. Maybe you follow me on Instagram at Actuariel, same way it's spelled here. If you know absolutely nothing about becoming an actuary, the one thing that you need to know is you have to pass a lot of exams in order to become an actuary. In today's video, I'm gonna talk you through the ways that I studied for my actuarial exams in order to become a fellow of the Casualty Actuarial Society. And fun fact about me, I didn't fail any of the exams, <laughs> which I don't know how to say without making it sound like I'm bragging, so usually I just brag about it. My coworkers can vouch. I let them know pretty often that I didn't fail any of these exams. I've posted the timing of all the exams I took on my actuarial Instagram page. I passed 10 exams over the course of a little over five years. I want to talk you through the study strategies that I used, give you a whole bunch of tips that really resonated with me. Um, but before I get into that, there are a few things that I want to say. The first being, if something does not resonate with you, you don't have to do it. Just because it worked for me does not mean that it works for you. Everyone learns differently and you're going to hear me mention a lot of times in this video the ways that I think and the ways that work well for me, but that doesn't mean that it's going to work well for you. The second thing that I wanted to mention before I jump into a video full of tips is that along with a lifetime full of privilege, I lived with my parents throughout the exam process, which absolutely put me in a position of privilege. I was able to focus solely on my studying. I didn't have to worry about paying rent. I didn't have to worry about buying groceries. I didn't have to worry about cleaning the house. My parents were handling that. And I do really recognize that it's a privilege to be able to focus so much of my energy on exams specifically and not have to worry about all the other adult things that go on. So I just wanted to throw that out there too. The way I like to refer to my study technique is to study in iterations. I would pass through the entire material multiple times. I would iterate through it and each iteration would have a different purpose, a different goal, and a different way of learning the material. One of the nice things about having to take 10 actuarial exams is that I got to refine my study techniques as I took more and more exams. At the end of each exam, I would debrief with myself and say what worked and what didn't. And what I really found is that in my first iteration of studying, it didn't benefit me to try to learn the material because I wouldn't remember the material. <laughs> I'm the kind of person who cannot study for 12 hours in a day. My brain just does not have the attention span. I prefer to study over more months, but fewer hours per day versus studying for a shorter amount of time and then cramming just these really long marathon study sessions in. I studied three months for each of the preliminary exams and four months for each of the advanced exams. Since I was starting the study process so early, it didn't make sense to spend three weeks on chapter one, really, really understand chapter one, because by the time I would get through the entirety of the material, I would have completely forgotten chapter one. My goal was generally to spend about a month getting through the entirety of the syllabus, which for some exams, that was a lot. <laughs> some of the syllabi, is that the plural of syllabus? I think so. Some of the syllabi were stacks and stacks of papers. The goal of my first pass was to make sure that everything was clear to me the second time that I iterated through the material. What do I mean by this? In my first pass, I was making my formula sheets. I was making some study aids. I was possibly making flashcards. Probably wasn't making flashcards. I don't love flashcards. I only did it for the later, more advanced exams because there's more memorizing to do. I was highlighting and underlining and leaving myself notes in the margins. If there was something that I had to spend, you know, 30 minutes, three hours staring at a paragraph to try to understand what it was saying, once I finally understood it, I would write myself notes in the margin to say, this is what this paragraph means, so that the next time that I read it, it's clearer to me because it's explained in a way that my brain already understands. If you've purchased a study manual to learn the material, and I do recommend purchasing study manuals to learn the material, they would have already aggregated past exam problems with each of the chapters so that you can do them. And I would say in my first iteration, I would do a few problems per chapter, but I wouldn't necessarily want to do all the problems at the end of the chapter because then there's nothing left for my next iteration. So first pass is make your formula sheet 100% one thousand percent make your formula sheet early make some summaries highlight your notes make it super clear so that the next time that you have to read it 
you understand what's going on, do a few problems to make sure you're starting to get it, and so that you have a sense of what the most important information in the chapter is. But an important tip for your first pass is that if you're getting stuck on a page, if you're getting stuck on a chapter, if there is something that you're just staring at, it doesn't make any sense to you, skip it. It's not worth spending three days feeling mind blocked because you cannot possibly read through this chapter and that sometimes happens. You're not going to remember it anyway. You can worry about trying to figure it out later in the process. For now, we skip it. We move on. We're trying to just get organized. And if reading this one chapter is stopping you from getting through the rest of the material, make a star at the corner of the chapter. Like we are not afraid to scribble all over the page during our first pass. Leave yourself a little note saying, I skipped chapter 13, I'm gonna get back to it later, but for now it's just incomprehensible to me and I'm going to try to focus on the things that I can comprehend, try to make the stuff that's a little bit more sensical to me make sense so that next time everything is golden. The next few iterations of studying really involve rereading the material and doing a zillion problems. You are using all of that first iteration prep work and you are putting it to the test. <laughs> I am the kind of person who learns by doing, so I'm not the kind of person who ever paid extra for video lessons to try to understand things. I'm not the kind of person who went to in-person lectures to try to uh, learn the material. I really learn by doing, and so in my second, third, maybe fourth iteration, um, what I would do is I would reread the chapter and then do the problems using the formula sheet that I prepared. Another tip that I have a whole video on is that I would always do my practice problems open book. What I mean by this is I don't see huge benefit in just reading the problem if I don't understand it immediately going to the solution. What I would do is I would say, okay, let me read the question. If I think I know how to solve it without looking at anything, let's try to do that. That rarely happens. The next thing I would do is I would look at my formula sheet and say, okay, can I figure out the answer from my formula sheet? What do I think is a relevant formula to help me solve this problem? If I can solve it using just the formula sheet or just a summary sheet, golden, do that. If I can't figure it out, I'm opening up the chapter again, I'm skimming through the chapter, trying to find the relevant information so that I can solve the problem. And then finally, if I still can't figure it out, that's when I look at the solution, that's when I try to solve it line by line with the solution. And the reason why I really like this technique of doing problems is that it forces me to reread the chapter a zillion times. If I read the solution to that problem, all I get is the solution to that problem. But as I'm skimming through the chapter to try to find the information that I need to solve that problem, I'm also skimming a whole bunch of other information that's in the chapter, and it's all sort of getting into my brain a little bit. It also helps me know if my formula sheet is adequate. I don't have a photographic memory, but what my brain does is it says, like, I know the answer is at the top left of the page, or I know that the answer is at the bottom right of the page. And so what I would do is, in my mind, I wouldn't be able to see the formulas, but I can say, okay, when I'm at the bottom right, it's a negative. When I'm at the top left, it's a positive. And so I would sort of use that um, to map out where on the page different formulas are, and that would just help me solve problems. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone, but that's how my brain worked. I have a whole other video on how I use study trackers, but I wasn't the kind of person who would track hours. For me, it's not about the number of hours, it's about the quality of learning that I'm doing. What I wanted to track is, did I cover every chapter? Did I do problems for every chapter? Have I made flashcards for every chapter? Have I put the formulas for every chapter on my formula sheet? Like I would check those boxes off in my tracker. If a certain chapter didn't have any formulas, didn't need it, I would just make a not, not needed <laughs> note to myself. Um, but that's sort of how I kept myself organized. They recommend 100 hours of studying per hour of actuarial exam. For some people, that's really helpful. For me, I couldn't tell you how many hours I studied. I didn't find it helpful to track that because like I said, my brain after a few hours just stops functioning. I feel like a broken record just referring to old videos, but I do have a whole other video about how, honestly, it sounds so dumb. I'm like, I discovered it later in the exam process. But later in the exam process, I started using study music as I studied, and I found that that really allowed my brain to focus for a longer period of time. I would search on YouTube, study music playlist, and I'd find a two hour video, a six hour video, and just 
listen to that and I found my brain would concentrate a lot better on the material and would allow me to study for a longer period of time. One tip that I think is super important, like absolutely necessary, is to give yourself permission to take time off. I've said this on the internet before, I'll say it on the internet again. For a lot of the time that I spent studying, there were days where my brain would not focus on studying and I would not let myself rest. I would just feel guilty about not studying, but also not be able to study because my brain absolutely couldn't focus. And that is just counterproductive on every level. I'm not studying, I'm not refreshed, I'm not relaxing, I don't feel better, nothing good is coming from this. When you give yourself permission to take time off, when you say, okay, today is not the day, I cannot study, you let yourself reboot, you let yourself feel better and then next time when you come back to studying, you're fresher, you're lighter, you're like, all right, let's do it. I took last night off. For one whole year when I was studying, I was taking adult ballet classes and Tuesday nights were ballet nights. I didn't have to study on Tuesday night because Tuesday night was ballet night. I would reward myself with things like going for walks, which was so important. Do, do go on walks when you're studying. Get some sunshine. Make sure that happens. I reward myself with bubble baths. I reward myself with all sorts of fun things. Food. Snacks. I reward myself with snacks. I'm a top quality eater. This one isn't a study tip, but something that really helped me get through this exam process and I think really motivated me to pass all my exams on the first try is the people that I was surrounding myself with. I have mixed feelings about the fact that I took an actuarial degree and I've made videos about this. But the number one reason to study actuarial science in university, in my opinion, is that it puts you in an environment where you're surrounded by other actuarial students. During my degree, my earliest classes would be at 10.15 or 11.30 in the morning, but I'd show up around 9, 9.30, meet up with my classmates, and we'd do homework together, we would study together, we would motivate each other. We weren't all necessarily studying for the same actuarial exam at the same time, but the fact that we knew other people who were studying for exams really motivated all of us to strive for better, motivated all of us to try harder. And then my first actuarial internship really lit a fire under my butt because my first actuarial internship was at the company that I work for now, and the company that I work for now hires really talented actuaries. That's not a brag on myself. That's a brag on the people that I have the privilege of working with. And my first actuarial internship was the first time that I've ever felt inadequate, I would say. As someone who was used to being, you know, top of her class or, you know, top 20% of the class, whatever it is, I never really had to try that hard. And then I showed up here and everyone was at 150 and I was at, let's say 100, I probably wasn't at 100, but everyone else was up here and I had to say to myself, yo, Michelle, <laughs> step up your game or you're going to fall behind. And so I had to step up my game because they would say, look at him, he became a fellow at 23. Look at him, he became a fellow at 23. Look at him, he became a fellow at 24. Look at the other intern who's working here this term. He's studying for exam seven and eventually, after the internship, became a fellow at 22. These were the people I was pacing myself against. <laughs> Let's be clear. No one thinks you need to become a fellow at 23. That is not the goal. That is not the dream. No one needs to do that. But being surrounded by all these other fellows, being surrounded by all these other people who are still studying for these exams, we all motivated each other. I'm not the kind of person who likes to study in groups. I don't like it when we quiz each other. I don't need any of that. I much prefer to just be me and my study material and writing stuff down. But we would have study Facebook groups. And if I had problems, if I didn't understand something, I could ask them questions more often than not. What would happen is I would just go in those Facebook groups and complain. It's just really nice to have a place to complain and people to complain to who understand what you're going through because they're going through it at the same time. A lot of my coworkers were people who liked studying together, so they would book the same meeting room every evening after work and just go study there all the time on nights and weekends. I think there's something really beautiful about that. If that's something that would work for you, try to find it, but for me, I prefer to study alone. My study environment is a little strange, I will admit. 
I would study at home on the couch under blankets with a big mug of tea, probably a big bowl of popcorn because I like the kinds of foods that you can eat a million of and just like snack, 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 snack. I just wanted to be as comfortable as possible when I was studying. I know this isn't gonna work for everyone. I know a lot of my friends and coworkers think I'm nuts for that and that they have to be dressed and out of the house and at the library and they focus so much better, but no, 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 for me, I just wanna be at home, cozy, safe, warm, and that is where I thrive. <laughs> I mentioned earlier that for most of the exams I didn't bother with flashcards, but there were a couple exams that were pretty theory heavy, and what I would do is I would prepare virtual flashcards. The site that I used was Cram. No one's paying me to say that. <laughs> it's just what I use. And what was nice about it is I could make the flashcards on the computer, it would link to the app that was on my phone, and at the time when I was living in Montreal I had a 45 minute commute to and from work, and on my commute, I could just open up the app, flip through the flashcards, and memorize some stuff. I wasn't gonna be doing problems on the subway, but flashcards was good, you know, just that, that quick repetition. It was a, a nice way to pass the time on the subway, possibly. In one of my most recent Q&A sessions on my Instagram page, which again, you should follow, someone asked me for a study secret. And I said that this isn't a secret per se, because I have said it on the internet before, but the night before my exam, I would sleep with my formula sheets under my pillow. There is something very nice about the ritual and the superstitions that come along with studying sometimes. For me, I believe that after studying three, four months for an exam, the day before your exam, you are not doing yourself any good by doing a little bit of extra studying. The day before the exam is all about getting yourself in a good mindset to take the exam the next day. I would be taking bubble baths, I would go for a massage. The day before my very last actuarial exam, I actually vlogged, and you can find that on the internet. And for me, sleeping with my notes under my pillow was just a weird, superstitious ritual that helped me learn by osmosis and helped me feel a little bit better so that if in the middle of the night I woke up and went, oh, is it a plus or a minus? I can just pull up my formula sheet, say, it's a minus, and then go back to sleep. Do thumbs up this video if you found it helpful and let me know any of your study tips in the comments down below. Good luck through the actuarial exam process. I love all of you. Thank you for calling. Bye.